let's talk about some more complex calculations for your gameplay attributes. Because so far, if we for instance go into my gameplay effect for a regen, we've been using these simple instant and has duration and infinite ones with just simple modifiers where we say, hey, add a certain float. We've even used the set by color and I've covered the attribute based ones uh, to simply modify an attribute very directly. But sometimes that's not quite enough as we saw in the last video where we wanted to check, hey, increase the health attribute, but don't go over the max health attribute. And we can't do that with these simple modifiers as easily. And that is where we go into the custom calculation classes. There's two different types of custom calculation classes. The ones that we use for the modifiers here, for the magnitude of a modifier. And then we also have a execution calculation class. Both of these we're going to talk about in C++. There is a blueprint version of the magnitude one, but I don't think it actually works. It seems to be lacking a few features that are pretty pivotal to actually having it work. Uh, it seems to be bugged and it has been bugged for about a year. So I don't think they're going to be fixing this anytime soon. So both of these are going to be C++ related. We're going to take them one at a time though, starting with the magnitude calculation first because it's the easier of the two most of the time you're going to be using these i'm going to go real quick over when to use one and when to use the other so strap in for a little bit of theory blasting by default you should be looking at using the calculation for the modifiers and that is because number one they're easier to set up and number two they can be predicted over the network so if you get into a habit of using these more if you ever move into using the gameplay ability system in a multiplayer game, uh, these are going to work a lot better. Whereas the execution classes have some trouble with that from what I understand. Now, what is the limitation though of the modifier calculation? And um, the only real big limitation to it is that it is a modifier to modify one attribute. If you want to do a calculation that needs to influence multiple attributes, I'm going to give you an example here. For instance, in my own game, I have a system where all my enemies have both a defense bar, which is more of like a guard that protects their HP. So as long as they still have some of that defense, all of my attacks only ever do one HP of damage. The moment I get rid of the entirety of their defense bar, I can actually start dealing more damage to their HP. So every time I hit them, I need to influence both their defense bar and their HP bar, two different attributes. For that, you use an execution class instead. So that's a real quick overview of the difference between the two of them. Let's get started with making one. If we come over here into the C++ class, as you can see, I've already um, made a public folder here and I made a class, but we're gonna go over making one real quick. Uh, if we make a new C++ class and we go into all classes and we just simply look for calculation, we get the options uh, for gameplay effect calculation, which is the more complex one, and then gameplay modifier magnitude calculation, which is the one we're gonna be talking about today. It does say here, class used to perform um, custom gameplay modifier calculations, either via blueprint or native code. This is a lie. It's just straight up not true from what I can tell. We're gonna be using it though in C++. But as I said, I already made a C++ class because I was testing this before. So let's open up that C++ class. When you open this up, there's gonna be nothing in here and we're going to add a constructor and a specific function, which I have on my clipboard right now. So I'm just going to paste them in. The constructor is always going to be the name of your class as a function. And then we're also going to be adding the virtual void calculate base and magnitude underscore implementation with the parameter const f gameplay effect spec reference called spec, which will be a const override function. Then in the header file, we also need to define what attributes we're going to be capturing. So we want to add F gameplay effects attribute capture definition, and we'll call that health definition. Indeed, GitHub Copilot is being very clever. And let's see if it has, uh, it, it doesn't know what I want, uh, because we also want our max health definition. So let's change this around real quick. Now we can go into the CPP file and I already have set up the constructor and the calculate base magnitude implementation which you can just do in Visual Studio by right clicking and create definition so that should be fine 
in our constructor, we're going to uh, use our health definition and we're going to attribute to capture and we'll set that to be equal to our attribute set that we have made. So let's actually, um, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you guys can actually see a little bit better. We call it a base attribute set. So we probably need to include that to begin with. Okay, so now that we have this included with the uh, basic attribute set, we can, uh, and Copilot already is suggesting it, say our U basic attribute set, and then we can get our health attribute from that. So now this definition knows what attribute it should be looking at, but it still doesn't know uh, where it should get the attribute from. So we get our health definition attribute source, and that will be equal to E gameplay effects attribute capture source and that can be either set to the target or the source the source being the thing that is applying the gameplay effect the target being the thing getting it applied to it so in this case that will be the target and then we can set up whether or not it should be a snapshot snapshotting simply means that it takes the value at the start of this whole calculation and keeps that as the value that is going to be using so if you're working with like a gameplay effect that lasts for 10 seconds or even like longer to infinitely and there's a chance of the value changing mid calculation or mid effect but you don't want the changed value of that attribute you can set the snapshotting to being true if you do want to always have the latest up-to-date information on the value of a attribute then you set this to false and most of the time i do find that you want to set this to false and then we kind of just do the same thing with the max health attributes uh, which copilot is very very nicely doing for me here then in the relevant attributes to capture which is an array that is pre-made for you that you can use you can add these two uh, definitions that we have made here so now we have access to that very easily and we have them set up telling them to get a specific attribute from our set telling them where to get the attribute from and whether or not it should be snapshotted now that all of that is set we can add it to that array and with that we can move on to the actual calculation here in the next function down the list here we need to set up a few things first as well so that will be our const f gameplay tag container so that will be f gameplay tag container uh, pointer source tags and it will be equal to our spec dot capture source tags dot get aggregated tags so that's this whole list that we've got over here and then we'll do the same thing with the target tags next up we need to set up our f aggregator evaluate parameters which is this one here and we'll call that evaluation parameters just to keep things simple and in those evaluation parameters, we set our source tags to the source tags that we just captured and the target tags to the target tags that we just captured. We need to have these tags because some of the functions that we're going to be using in a moment require the use of these tags. Now, we make a float for our health value. And let's also uh, make a float real quick for our max health because we're going to be needing both of those. Then what we will do is we need to get the value from that captured attribute that we made before so we can get captured attribute magnitude and that will take in our definition that we've made the spec that we get as a parameter on this function the evaluation parameters that we have made which requires the source tags and the target tags and then our float value that that value is then going to get put into so from here on out we can do all of our calculations with this float that we've called health instead of having to worry about getting the attribute every single time all of this is just set up to get that attribute put it into a float so that we can actually do math with it and we'll do the same thing here for the maximum health so now that we have all of that set up we can actually start doing our programming logic which is all relatively simple uh, our default return here is going to be uh, just one so 1.0 f but if we have a health that would increase past our maximum health we want to do a little bit of extra math uh, we're going to uh, return f math uh, clamp between 0 and 1 that is true and we're just going to say 
max health minus health. So this will take our max health, let's say that's 100, and our health, let's say that is 85, which will be 15, if you subtract those from each other, uh, and then we'll clamp it to uh, between 0 and 1, so it's going to be 1. This is the easiest way um, to do this. It's honestly a more elegant way than what I had before anyway. All of this code, like this bit of code, you can literally just copy paste in every single calculation. This doesn't change between calculations. These only change depending on the attributes that you want to capture, and you do need to define that. And the same thing goes for these. This is all very simple boilerplate setup once you actually understand what all of these lines of code do. They're not that complicated. Of course, if you have multiple different attributes, everything beneath this can be a lot more complicated than the very simple setup that we have right here. You can do a lot of awesome stuff with this. And don't forget all your semicolons. I almost compiled with an error. So now that we have that set up, we can change in our uh, gameplay effect regen from using a scalable float instead to a custom calculation class, which now will have our calc regen class in here. And we can still pre-multiply additive and post-multiply additive values, and we can use a coefficient to make it scale up to be more effective, all that kind of stuff. We're not going to worry about any of that stuff right now. With all that done, let's set our base health attributes to 80. So we spawn with 80 health, and our maximum health will be set to 120. A quick little disclaimer, if you have any issues with getting errors here in your output log saying that it can't capture certain attributes, maybe you should not use live coding, just close the engine entirely and rebuild from your source in Visual Studio, that can help that issue. So you can see we have 80 HP now and I can enable my regen effects and it will go up to 120 and it will stop them. And even if I do the regen effects again, it doesn't go over 120 because that is what we programmed in. And that's the basic idea behind these more complex calculations that you can do for your modifier magnitudes. Now, again, this is the version of custom calculations that you should most of the time be using, but if there's anything more complex that you do need to do, which influences multiple attributes, we will be going into that next time with custom execution calculations, which are a little bit more complex. Now that you have a good grasp on these custom modifier calculations, it should be an easy step into all of that. So I'll see you back with that video next time. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas,